So, um, so don't go driving by. Okay? <laughs> but in southern Utah, there's an amazing place because there was a, a lake there. And it was there for thousands of years and it dried up about 50 years ago. And when it dried up, it left behind, you know how a lake is, right? Like that. Well, it filled in all the siltation flowing in and it just kept getting, you know, more and more dirt in it until it just wasn't a lake anymore. You know, and um, but what was left behind was on the edges was like 15, but in the middle, 99 feet deep, rich of the most amazing soil you'd ever seen. Imagine fishes decomposing, shells decomposing, all the snow melt from the mountains coming down year after year after year. And so we did something called green manure. It's a way to create massive nitrogen in soil. And what you do is you create, you grow alfalfa. And we had to let the alfalfa grow for a couple of years so the roots got 10, 12, 20 feet deep in the soil. And then you cut the alfalfa and you just mulch it and leave it right on top of the earth and it starts to attract worms. And then after it dries up, you churn it just barely underneath the topsoil and now the worms come and they start to eat all that decomposing matter. Now the alfalfa itself, its roots have something called ribosium. Ribosium is like an infection for the soil. It's like a virus that gets on the plant from the soil and it hooks onto the root and these big nodules uh, grow and then they die. And when they die, all the nitrogen that they had taken from the soil gets put into the root of the alfalfa. And that's called nitrogen fixing. Have you guys heard of nitrogen yeah. fixation? Yeah. Nitrogen fixing, well that's what does it, is these ribosium. The ribosium have a very short life and so when they die, they outgas, what? Nitrogen. So by, you got the worm poop, you got the ribosium, you got all of that decomposing matter from the from the lake bed. And this is, in my opinion, I don't know that there's any richer soil on the planet. I really don't. I mean, I really, I don't know if you guys remember your history class, the Tigris and the Euphrates, how they called that the fertile crescent because of the way that the remineralization happened. Well, this was that type of environment. So um, because of our crop rotations and that, you know, I mean, this is like a 7,000 acre dry lake bed. So we're able to rotate our crops and use it in the way it's supposed to be used. And um, that and allows for, yeah. That allows and how far is it from other industry? So it's about 250 miles from the nearest big city would be Salt Lake, maybe 300 miles. What's grown there, Dave? Dave, Dave. Debbie needs you. We're gonna have to start transitioning. <laughs> Let's so do it. Over to give a warning. Woo! So, who's ready for the tour? So I gotta tell you guys, we are like creating a balance here. So listen close.